Naval Expedition presentation a few weeks ago. They don't know me. Uh, my name is Ray Hamble. I'm the site supervisor for the U.S. Aero Museum. I don't get over to this part, part of the park too terribly much. And what we're going to do for the next, uh, probably the next 40 minutes, 30 minutes, we're going to try to make our way through 90 slides. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about the commemoration and the art in the park. The art in this park is a, a pr premier example, we call it Beaux-Arts uh, style of art. It was, it was a rage in Europe towards the end of the uh, 19th century. And it began a little later here in our country, just about 1908 through 1925 when it took off in our country. And most of the tangible resources you see in this park are just that, the reflective of this art movement. And the idea for doing this was to provide something tangible for the park visitor, something to be provocative, emotional, compelling. And that's why you see so much of the art represented the way it is in this national military park. It's also referred to as the art park of the world for that very reason. You see some of the premier sculptors of the early 20th century, mid 20th century, and their work is out there in the park. The Kitsons, both of them, Henry and Theo, and also all the Tiffany studio work we have out there. Uh, we'll touch base on that in just a second, though. I also want to mention that uh, as potential guides, the new guy, folks, it is uh, it's incumbent upon you to become more well acquainted with the resource, especially what you see out here in the park as you go around. Because visitors will ask you, what is that monument? What is that supposed to mean? Where is that from? Which unit is that? Uh, this is a free publication. I, I picked it up. It's very important. This is what I use to get my stuff material together tonight for this talk. So try to grab one of these. It's entitled um, Art of Commemoration, and Parker Hills put this out. Oh, about two years ago, Virginia? Yeah, it's been around for a while, but it's a very, very, very valuable resource. Can't say that enough. Also, um, those of you who don't already have it. Where did you get that? Uh, we have some here, and you can get it across the street. We have uh, this available in PDF format on the CDs we'll give you free charge, but also for the, the newcomers, this is also a requisite. A lot of monuments in there, some of the dry information about sculptors, uh, prices, commemoration dates, dedication, uh, even stories of political intrigue therein. So try to grab one of those too, not to mention some stuff about a nice commentary of material culture, weapon systems, everything else you could possibly imagine is in this rascal over here. Oh, this is an illustrated guide to the Vicksburg campaign in National Military Park. This was uh, put out by Jeff Gambrone. Uh, it's been about four years now, I believe. Um, those, uh, this, the guys that have been around for a while, do you still use this? You go back to it, because I use it all the time. I can remember something. It's over 1,500 monuments out there, folks. You can't memorize every single one of those art dedication dates. They sell, it's a, it's a retail item here in the store now, the hard copy, but we've also got the digital um, format on a CD and that's free of charge, I believe. Tim, you still have those? The, uh, that's, that, that's from uh, Jeff Chambrones? Yeah. Yeah, um, I've given them out. If anyone did not have one, just contact me and we can burn another copy for you. Very, very valuable resources, though. a lot of, a lot of condensed information. Quick, quick thing on CDs, um, at the break, David uh, printed out those ones on reconstruction. For those of you who asked for them between speakers, we can go ahead and give you uh, give them to you. Joyce, if you get cold, tell me I'll turn it off. I'm sweating. All right, let's go ahead and get started then. Um, back to the tangible resource you see in the park. This is a battlefield. This is hallowed ground. Uh, American service personnel, both Union and Confederate, made the ultimate sacrifice here in what they believed. Uh, we agree with it now or not, it's of no consequence. The fact that it happened is what's important, and that's reflected in the art. So as you go around, that's the only tangible reminder we have of what took place here 150 years ago. So you're going to get down here and you can see. Uh, as early as 1895, uh, veterans were actually visiting the military park, both uh, Grand Army of the Republic, GAR, and United Confederate Veterans, UCB uh, members were visiting the military park, and they were very dismayed to see the uh, condition of the park. Uh, cows were grazing on the battlefield, there was no monumentation, uh, the earthworks had fallen into disrepair, lots of erosion, and vandalism, things like that. And so they set about, set in motion, I should say, an entity to actually manage this park and commemorate it. The only thing they had early on in the park was the Surrender Monument. That's the one that's down there on Pemberton Avenue now. It looks a lot different back then. You see the, the landscape's largely devoid of trees. Uh, the trees were not here for the most part during the siege and shortly thereafter. I'm not going to steal too much Virginia thunder on that. She'll talk about that next. And the veterans visited the site. I mean, this is as they were, they went again to petition Congress. <coughs> 
to allocate funds for the commemoration or the creation of a military park. Some of the first officers that were in the military park or part of the, uh, this entity were actually veterans that were here. This is the actual 1917 Peace Jubilee, <clears throat> excuse me, that was down in the south loop portion of the park. Yeah, we don't have an internet connection here, and I apologize, but uh, I encourage you, when you get home, there's a um, website called Critical Pass, and put in Vicksburg Peace Jubilee. It's actually old video footage of the 1917 Jubilee, and these guys, by the thousands, congregated on Vicksburg, both Union and Confederate veterans, and spent several days in South Loop. When you sit up there in the railroad read out now the Texas Monument, you can look down and see that ramp coming up from the railroad. That was put there to facilitate the arrival of the participants of the Peace Jubilee in 1917. Uh, during the, this period, obviously we had just entered World War I, consequently you don't see many army tents out there, you see circus tents, that's where these guys stayed. Again. This is curious, it goes back to uh, a lot of visitor contacts we have, and you will have too in your vehicles, we have them at the front desk. A lot of folks from up north and down here both are still fighting this war in a sense, a lot of animosity. And I find that curious, because these guys managed to stay together for several days and get along just fine talking about war, and they'd actually been shooting at each other not too long before that. <clears throat> so it's a commemoration and the fellowship. That's overall one of the overall themes we have here in the park and the art. Some of the early officers, that's, uh, there's a laser now, cool. Stephen D. Lee right there, he was the first president of the uh, Vicksburg uh, Military Park Commission. And that's outside the old courthouse, of course. And there he is again. He's an interesting character. He's actually, um, of course, he's very one of the youngest uh, generals in the Confederacy during the Civil War. Does very well, performs admirably in every theater of operations, both out east and here in the west. After the war, he goes on to found what is now Mississippi State University. He's the first president of that institution. Uh, he has a statue in the park. I don't know how much it cost, unfortunately. But it's a beautiful statue that's just been renovated, it's not renovated or cleaned a couple years ago and they waxed it. And you'll see that a lot in the park too. Uh, you'll see some monuments have a lot of oxidations. Bronze actually uh, attracts the oxidation. You see that patina, that green beach. <coughs> a few years ago, we actually had some folks come in and do a restoration or a cleaning of them. That's when they apply hot wax to it, then take an acetylene torch and melt the wax off and polish it and take some of the oxidation. Uh, longevity in that process has seemed to be pretty good so far, but you will see some monuments that look pristine, like they're brand new. That doesn't mean they're brand new. It's a little more older than the, uh, the newer ones. Uh, Captain Blue T. Rigby, he's also one of the uh, early park officers. He's buried in the National Cemetery here. He has a grave out of Oh, in the back part of the cemetery, one of the rear loops. And that's one of the uh, sculptures by Kitson we have in the park here. And then a Tiffany Studios sculpture. Which, uh, you're going to see lots of different types of art. You're going to see freestanding sculpture like this. These equestrian statues, Boyd Tillman there. We're going to revisit that in a couple minutes. Another equestrian statue. That's going to be the Iowa Monument. Of course, the great equestrian statue. There it is in the daylight. And a little bit of trivia. You can't see it on this side, but you can see the uh, end of the sword hilt on the other side. The sword that Grant is wearing is not the original sword from the monument. It's actually a naval sword. It's not an army sword because due to vandalism we lost that sword a long time ago. So what they did was they took the naval sword off one of the admirals on the Navy monument and put it on Grant. So the uh, Lincoln's foot was on the back side of the Navy monument is uh, sans sword now. He has no sword. And this has actually uh, experienced quite a bit of vandalism as well. You see some of the halters missing and the parts that can be broken off or broken off. Uh, there he is, trained to stride his horse Kangaroo, which he received after the Battle of Shiloh, that had been the next Confederate horse. And it wasn't Kangaroo because of its gait, he called it Kangaroo because it looked like a kangaroo in the face, so, so he says. It doesn't look that way now. Yeah. They've done some work to it, haven't they, Yeah, the, the reins are on it, the okay, spurs, thanks. everything is, is, okay, is fixed up. Like the sword's still on it, the old one? Okay. Yes. We also have these uh, Bas reliefs. You see a lot of these in the park. That's going to be the bulk of the monumentation you see in the park, especially when you have um, majors, colonels, lesser, uh, not necessarily junior officers, but not the, the big players like the corps commanders are portrayed in this respect. Uh, some of them are more, more in depth or reflect more talent than others, uh, but the Kitsons especially using Tiffany Studios to cast these, a lot of these monuments, these Bas reliefs, they're really just splendid works of art. I encourage you to get out in the vehicle some days, especially this time of year, get up a little closer and take a look. 
And they also have some of the casting of the foundry names who should be down here in this corner or up here in the major field. You can see here it was casting when the Chuck Foundry did it. In the bust. And this is the Iowa part of the Iowa Monument. And I kind of zoomed in on this because as far as raw sheer talent and the, uh, the type of art we have in this part, this one's probably most reflective of what the uh, reason to enter, if you will, the reason it being for the art in this part. And this has just undergone quite recently a total renovation. I think Iowa, uh, Iowa State actually put some money into it and they fixed the broken off muskets and the rains are missing there. It's been uh, shined up, so it's a really beautiful monument now. Okay, the uh, process of doing these, it's not like uh, a lot of folks would, would assume that they just get a big piece of granite or a big piece of uh, bronze and carve it up. It's actually a lot of these brands, uh, bronzes are cast, what they call sand casting, or what they call a lost wax te technique of casting these monuments. This right here is uh, an example of a lost wax technique. What it is, is the artist made a model of an apple there. You can't see the stem because the top is uh, closed off by the, uh, the fire resistant clay. But on the side here, what you see, it's a wax, a wax model. On the side, these are called sprues. They're actually hollowed out. So when you pour the bronze or the medium in the top here, that's molten, usually about 1200 degrees centigrade. It comes down, fills these voids, these channels, come straight down, it fills the bottom of the body in, and obviously the wax melts. Then you crack it up and take it off, and you have to polish it up. But there's a lot more work to be done still even after that because you got to get rid of the sprues. It's a Tillman statue again. That's in the artist workshop uh, before it was brought to the park. You see the sprues in place right here. There's one here and then back here. The supports. Those are taken out. It's polished up. It's sanded down. All the burrs and the spurs are removed. It's also uh, good to be acquainted with some of the things people are going to see in the park. People are going to ask you, what's that? A point of the Shirley House. A point of the old superintendent's quarters down there in the uh, ravine beneath the Illinois Monument. You need to know what those are. Shirley House is a little postcard there before prior to the uh, renovation of the property. That is the only structure, obviously, that was here during the siege and campaign of Vicksburg. It's still inside the military park. It's a nice photograph of it. Pretty impressive. I believe it was 1916, is that right? That it was renovated, 1906? Is that the first renovation? There it is after renovation, and it becomes a museum. And after that, there's even people actually living on the property until the 1960s, park employees. This is the interior. I think it's, uh, you can't see too much of it right there. You can see the coal bunker for the heating unit there, old radio. The person doesn't look too happy to be in the picture. <laughs> Staircase in the middle. Uh, the Shirley House looks a lot, lot better now. They do, uh, it's been a couple years, actually about three or four years, they did a comprehensive renovation of the structure, and it's been brought back to with this historic appearance for the most part. Unfortunately, there's no material culture on display yet inside that museum, but folks will ask you that too. Well, what's inside? Uh, unfortunately, not much. At some point in the future, hopefully we can uh, get some funding to actually, this is a permanent exhibits in this property, some interpretive exhibits for folks to be looking at. And in the summertime, when you have additional seasonal rangers and park guides on, we do try to open this house up intermittently during the Saturdays and Sundays in particular and have somebody there all day or the bulk of the day to answer visitors' questions and give them a chance to walk through. So we take a tour around that's open. Go ahead and uh, take that into consideration. Give your visitors about a good solid 10 or 15 minutes extra when they visit the Illinois Monument and check out the Shirley House. Also, there are uh, towers in this park. There is three of them, observation towers. Uh, due to potential uh, liability litigation and also the prohibitive cost of uh, maintenance, they were removed in the 1960s. And I hear stories of folks that grew up here that are much older than I am telling me, oh yeah, where, where are those? Well, they're long gone. I'm really disappointed to see that, but uh, I think that would be really cool to have those still to look out. And there was uh, one down near All Saints in South Confederate. There was one by the Logan statue, and there was near Fort Hill. Those were the location of the three, three towers. One of the most conspicuous artists, again, in this park is uh, Alice Theodore Ruggles Kitson. Uh, she's an interesting character. She's married to Henry Kitson, who's an Englishman. She's actually from Massachusetts, and she displays a talent at a very young age in sculpting, but being the time it was, she was not admitted to any uh, art institutions in this country. She is, however, embraced with open arms in the uh, an art school of Paris. And that's where she spends a lot of her formative years learning her art. Uh, 
31 works in this park, in this park by Tiffany Studios that she's responsible for, both Union and Confederate. Her husband, Henry H. Kitson, he's the premier artist in this park. <clears throat> and uh, we understand pretty good friends with uh, Captain Rigby, one of the founders of the park, or the first officers of the park. So there's a public entry there. He uh, secures the uh, the contract to produce lots of art in the park and raise a few eyebrows because he and Rigby are so close. So they know it's fair competition. And you see guys like Adolf Wyman. That's the uh, Mercury Dime you see there. He's a very renowned artist. Excuse me. He's also responsible for the uh, the Vila statue, which is right at the back door here. It's not very often you see a colonel with a big statue like the one we have out the back door, but in this case, the family actually uh, put money forth to commemorate their relative. And he was the guy responsible for that work. Wasn't he also Secretary of the Interior? Yeah. It probably mind. helped. And a postmaster. Yeah, that certainly helped. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just the point I'm making is a general yeah. officer with yeah. respect to the generals over here. This is the uh, Monument Arch, actually. The arch uh, at one point was, at, was not where you see it now in the uh, parking lot. It was actually out on Clay Street near the Pizza Hut. The Pizza Hut is now, but as Clay Street had to be widened, they brought it closer to the park. Uh, funds for the monument were actually and left so over from the Peace Jubilee. That's a page for the creation of this uh, rather impressive uh, arch. Out of the 1,500 and change of monuments and markers in this park, only two of them are paid for by federal dollars. That's going to be the Navy Monument, as you see here, and the uh, statue to John C. Pemberton. Understandably, the uh, Southern State or Northern State wanted to put money forth to commemorate old John C. Kind of unfortunate. But it is a very impressive monument. It's supposed to be uh, supposed to resemble the National Monument, and it is where it is on the bluffs over there, right above the Cairo, for very good reason. Because Vicksburg still, 150 years later, is some change, is still the premier example of joint forces operations. It's the Navy's very, very <coughs> proud, understandably, of their contribution to Grant's efforts here at Vicksburg. It's of paramount importance, and that's why it's the biggest it is of where it is. At the base, those are the. Uh, the Admirals to see Farragut and Foot and all those guys down there. And at the back of the monument over here, that's where the sword was taken off the individual. And um, I've been here at this park about well, almost six years now, I guess, or five years. And I've had a question a couple <coughs> times. Believe it or not, and it sounds corny, you guys probably get it too. Did they use the top of that monument as a sniper's poster in the siege? <laughs> if you get know, questions like that, it'll all happen, I promise. And I'm always so tempted to say, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's why there's old openings up there. You can see them at the very top. First monument in the park is going to be a Kenton Monument. That's the Massachusetts State Monument. The first monument in town is going to be the 27th Louisiana. That's downtown by the fountain there. But as far as the park goes, it's the earliest one. Let's see if I can uh, find it. Uh, Missouri State Mon Memorial, an impressive work. Uh, either side, you have three on the left side. You have the Union troops. Confederate participants in Missouri literally had brother versus brother from Missouri since it was a uh, units from combatants from both uh, serving both sides of the state. Let's see if I can get some better picture over here before I go. In the middle of it, you have the Wing Nike, very popular uh, uh, Greco Roman or neoclassical character, mythological character. Uh, she's at the bow of the state. The bow, right here, at the, uh, of a ship's bow, the prow of a ship guiding the state of Missouri through troubled waters, uh, through the Civil War and through the future. Uh, she embraces a fascist that you see over here, a <coughs> classical of design. It's bound together canes, so uh, you still use uh, for a lot of iconology with the engineers and sappers. For unity, strength through <coughs> unity. At the top, you see an ax head being strength through unity and also for defense. And in her right hand, lifted up, is the olive branch of peace and reconciliation. And uh, that's a really neat area on the tour there where you stop with your visitors and get out, take a look at that, get up close on it, and have them recognize and appreciate the fact that literally feet apart, yards apart, these guys knew one another. And the night they would actually converse and go back the next day and <coughs> try to trade, killing one another. It's a close up before uh, restoration and polishing. Again, yeah, it's stylized, it's supposed to be emotive, it's supposed to be ethereal, it's to get your thinking, be emotionally provocative. Courage and the sacrifice of the competitors defending their homeland, and of course the Yankee invaders on the left hand freeze. Just to give you a heads up on that, uh, we're supposed to have funding to restore that entire monument 
in 2015. Nice. Awesome. And we're also in conversations with uh, uh, GAR units, the uh, Grand Army of the Republic units up there that want to raise money to restore this monument for, uh, I think the centennial on that is uh, 2015. Cool. So, okay. so we're going to need funding to fix it up one way or the other. Ohio is one of the uh, strange exceptions in the park. They have a lot of guys participating in, 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 in Grant's Army, obviously. But you just don't see one state monument in Ohio. Ohio. You see unit monuments all over the park, like the uh, projecto, the smaller projectile here, the mini ball, people call it. Uh, Alabama, I'm going to go kind of fast, folks. We're going to run it behind. But if you have any questions, uh, get with me. And also, there's all this is in the book, almost all of it, actually. Stephen Thomas, then our. Uh, Real renowned sculptor, but he's a little later. He's contemporary, more or less, in the 1950s. Uh, Pennsylvania, dedicated March 24, 1906. Uh, it's supposed to be 1905. It was running late because a lot of the work wasn't done yet. Actually, the bronze work here. Another uh, renowned artist, Albert Ross, in uh, Costa. <laughs> this cracks me up $12,500. I can imagine. And if you look at the inscription on that, uh, uh, Your Brother's Fought, that's the name of our uh, movie. That's the name of the new movie we got, had part of a couple, uh, about four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those of you that grew up here in Vicksburg, the old lore is that these guys cry blood, it's supposed to be haunted at night. That's actually yeah. what rust and oxidation have run down after periods of rain. And there's also a lot of teenagers that can hang out behind that monument, it's so easy to get to. <laughs> There's a dedication. Uh, actual Pennsylvania veterans outside the monument. Rhode Island, some of the I believe this is the uh, seventh Rhode Island. I've got the unit. There's only one, one Rhode Island unit that serves here. Uh, Francis Elwell, it looks really Kitson-esque, if you will. He's another one of the uh, Paris trained artists. You see a lot of texture and movement represented in his trousers here, his pants. And uh, something else I forgot, failed to mention. Almost every monument you see that's done is in the early 1900s uh, through this Beaux Arts style and using some of the uh, neoclassical attributes and all this design. The artists go through great lengths to make it as accurate as possible as far as the accoutrement go, buttons, belt plates, everything. Weapons are holding. They try to be spot on. And there's a couple monuments in the park that do a pretty good job. This is one of them in uh, Stephen D. Lee's uh, uniform accoutrements are pretty spot on. So we see a lot of neat stuff out there as far as that goes. Now there's two Kentucky monuments. This is the one that's been around for a little longer than the other one. They're both barely new, obviously. It's 2001. And uh, the original design for this monument called for them both to be shaking hands, but that was shot down. They don't want Jeff Davis and Lincoln shaking hands. And also, since it would never happened, they were going to portray that. One of the uh, myths goes, I don't know if it's true or not. I was here for the founding, Rick might know. There's supposed to be a, a penny underneath uh, Jeff Davis's foot for Lincoln's head under his foot. When they, when they actually installed the monument. You guys ever heard that? There was a lot of things that happened with that monument. Yeah. Uh, Rick, you were here for that, were you? Yeah, I was. The, the I wasn't two, here yet. Two men were uh, further apart. Uh, the sculptor visited the day before the uh, uh, dedication, and uh, Lincoln was leaning. We call him Leaning Lincoln. Uh -huh. And uh, the sculptor took Lincoln by the throat and started shaking him back and forth. <laughs> Chief of Maintenance turned around and uh, saw what was going on and stopped the guy and found out he was very upset about the way this all turned out. So they were brought closer together after the dedication. Uh, Lincoln was fixed so he wasn't leaning backwards. They put the uh, Kentucky uh, coat of arms there uh, uh, on the stone, which wasn't there. So yeah, right it made, made it a little bit better looking uh, monument by doing that. Obviously, there were, there were combatants for both sides in the state of Kentucky. Uh, to reach this monument, you actually have to get out of your vehicle and walk up the walkway to facilitate visitation of this site. It's up in the middle of the, uh, between that, the two lines. That painting, come to Jefferson, that is foot. Yeah. That painting that you talk about is on Jefferson. It yeah. is. Yeah, it is there, though? The statue, not of him. Oh, of the, I'm uh, sorry. It's Tour Stop 12. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I misunderstood things. Yeah. yeah, Tour Stop 12, there's actually a statue of uh, Jeff Davis, and that's where the penny is. It's underneath his foot. I thought I was here for some reason. Greg, yes. Uh, the, the sculptor put two quarters underneath Lincoln's uh, heel mm -hmm. so he wouldn't wobble during the dedication. Okay. And he moved him the next day, so I've got a picture, a real close up picture of those quarters under his heel. And that's okay. wobbling so bad. <laughs> Love that. It's 
one of the newest ones. It's also, also uh, this is for the ninth. Excuse me, this is for the Confederate Kentucky. Oh, that go in uh, 2010, guys? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have any information. It was so new that I was in the book. But uh, it's uh, got a very ver verbose <coughs> field te a text uh, field text field right here in the middle. We have a half hour to read it. You can go up and visit it. <laughs> the cool thing about this one, even though it's right up here, you have the Confederate flag draped over, and it was very nicely done. Artist uh, put a lot of uh, work and attention to some of the design elements and the uh, realism of that part of the monument. Texas, uh, it's one of the later ones. Again, it's reflective of the style, the music style of that period in the 1960s. Uh, say what you will, I, I'm not a big fan of this monument because he's got his shirt open and he's got exaggerated hairy chest. He's just missing, he's just missing disco chains. It's the only thing this guy's missing <laughs> on the picture. That's what the tag is. <laughs> this is a couple years ago, we had some reenactments in Texas in front of the uh, Red Granite Texas Monument which is up there at Redmond Redoubt, where the Texans uh, served so valiantly during the siege. And also, uh, for those of you potential guides, there's a little, little sidebar, um, which would be a tangent, if you will. I believe it was before my arrival, but they actually, uh, some of the last remains they found in the park was up in that area. It was not very, the better remains, I think it was the lieutenant, they think, in Texas, you know, it's right there in that site. That, that's another monument here in the near future that we hope to uh, yeah. maybe not do something but stabilize the bluffs on the other side. Yeah, behind that, that's where the railroad tracks are. It's starting to disappear, so we're in real, very real danger of losing this this resource. So I know Mike's actually visited with us, some also folks at regional level folks, secure funding for stabilization. In the Louisiana Monument, of course, it's a uh, neat little piece of information about this trivia, if you will, is the top was struck by lightning several years ago, and that uh, eternal burning flame you see up there on the top of this Doric column was actually uh, blown off and hurled quite a bit a distance. Anybody know where it ended up? Some of it was on the road. That's how we found out it was, it was hit. Yeah. And it sat there uh, without the good flame for a while. This is, uh, as far as vandalism goes, this is one of the favorite targets, too, in the past. The uh, State seal down here is a pelican feeding her young, and the uh, pelican's heads get uh, taken home a lot. There you go. And Virginia and I were just talking about this recently because for the longest time, that one of the heads or two of the heads were missing, and now they're back. So I'm glad they're repaired. It's during the construction of the monument. This is a uh, 19, this is a 27th flood. This is a uh, the. Uh, Louisiana mining the background, but there were flood refugees spending time in Vicksburg because it's a high ground. Hmm. But that monument is, by the way, is the highest point in the military park in uh, potentially, I think, Warren County, just shy of 400 feet above sea level. Of course, the Mississippi Monument. Now, you notice, uh, again, it's like the Union counterparts that are cast in the early 1900s, early 20th century, they had reflected the same type of uh, artistic style. In this case, you see the uh, Cleo, the Muse of History, in the middle there. We're going to close up here in a second to see that dedication. Notice right here, the bronze and Cleo are not installed yet. They were installed some years later because the time of the dedication was uh, bronze sculptures were still over in Florence, Italy, and they were being produced. They came a little later. There she is. In her lap, she has the, uh, the book of history where she's recording the deeds of the brave sons of Mississippi defending hearth and home during the siege and civil war. Uh, just as a safety note, too, in the summertime, when the visitors get out, that monument kind of bakes for kids to climb on it. Keep a mindful eye on it because it's hot, it'll burn them, it's a fragile monument, it's bad form, and also that thing is crawling with black little spiders are all over that monument. You get close on it. There you are again, just uh, talking about weapon systems and accoutrement. It's really cool to get up on these pieces and look at them closely and spend some time. So I urge all of you to better acquaint yourself with these, actually get out there when you have free time alone before you actually take a tour out and look closely at the design elements and what's going on. If there's something you don't recognize or understand, just get one of us and be happy to help you out. The Georgia Monument is uh, somewhat generic. You actually see similar monuments, like I said, in other, other parks. Uh, 
believe it or not, there's actually a Sears and Roebuck, if you will, after the Civil War during the, the big commemorative push in the early 20th century that sell a lot of these monuments and even smaller uh, unit monumentation. You just send them the text and the unit number you want on it and they'll produce it. So you see some generic monumentation in the park like that. Of course, our uh, most conspicuous monument by far it's going to be the Illinois State Mall Memorial. A large number of combatants in the uh, Vicksburg campaign, over 36,000 uh, combatants in Grant's Army. Big deal to them, especially here we call the Western Theater of Operations. About 22% of that state's operating budget, the year of dedication. That's how important it was to them. This is actually a quarter scale copy of the Pantheon in uh, Rome. And behind it there, which you don't see, is the, the dome. It's right back here. Again, has the pediment there. You have clearly the Muse of History, the maidens on the north and south on either side. Again, recording the deeds and the bravery and the fortitude of all combatants, all American service personnel, and of course the Gilded Eagle up top. I don't have a picture of it, but some of you are probably here for it. Rick was uh, very, very involved in it. A few years ago, they actually had to replace or repair, rebuild that bronze eagle up there with the gold, and they brought a Schmidt helicopter in to do that. And if we understand the downdraft and the motor system on that, uh, that helicopter was so intense, I was actually moving the Shirley house back and forth. And something that's going to go on in uh, Virginia, is that going to happen in the fall? Probably. We, wait, wait, wait. You're going to talk about that? No, I wasn't going to. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, it's a big bat house too. You go in here and see guano stains coming down because bats love to live in there because, of, well, it's cool, it's safe, and also there's an oculus up top. It's a mosaic of the forest, the oculus up top, just like in the Pantheon. That's, let me go a little faster, I apologize. This is going to be the uh, they're constructing the Illinois Monument. Um, the designer for the Illinois Monument is actually the chief engineer for Sherman's Corps during the Vicksburg campaign. And he's largely responsible for getting the plans drawn up at the location. Uh, you had artisans and actual, actual laborers who came over from Italy to help construct this monument. There he is, steam shovels, learning the hole there. This is interesting. All these old photographs we have, it's kind of a neat little thing. You can actually go through. Yeah, probably about, oh, more than half of them, you can always find a dog. It seems to be, there's always a dog in one of these pictures. Like St. Bernard there. And if you get this on your computer really closely, you can actually see the guy's lunch up here on the counter. He's got a sandwich or something wrapped up. It's really neat photographs. You've got that old. From the dedication. You see that reflected in one of the, the murals downtown in the waterfront, East Park. Uh, Minnesota State Memorial, that's the first memorial, uh, state memorial I'll come to you on the tour as you go around, the first big one. And uh, again, you see a lot of uh, Greco Roman and neoclassical design elements. You see the shield of the Republic right here. And it's also guarded by a wreath for peace. On the other hand, you can't see it, she has a sword, in other words, one's beginning the other. Tillman, of course, we already talked about him. Michigan State Memorial, it's one of the unique ones where it's uh, actually, it's granite. It's got a couple small pieces of marble in it too, but there's no, there's no uh, bronze components of this uh, piece of art. And there again, you have the, the figure of Nike with the piece of uh, leaves in her head. And over on the side, olive branch, and then the cog and machinery for industry representative of the state of Michigan. Brad, yes. that's Athena. That's Athena, thank you. Over here, this is one of the newer ones, 2004. It's the Mississippi African American Memorial. This is not a Confederate monument. A lot of folks say that. They come in and say, well, they're Mississippi African American units. No, they're not. They are Union troops. These are United States Colored Troops, and that's why the memorial is there. We're uh, also going to be doing some work on that monument to uh, replace the uh, slate on the plaza. Yeah. How was the decision made about where to place each state? Well, for the most part, especially when the park was just get, uh, getting founded, they try to put the monuments where the states had the largest number of concentration of those troops, like Illinois, for example. That's where I uh, saw Jackson Road. You had a lot of Union uh, troops from Illinois operating in that uh, part of the uh, battlefield. In this case, though, from my understanding, they went back and forth location with this. Rick, can you share anything on that? Yeah, that was, was pretty contentious. There were several places, but uh, 
what, what Grant Avenue is for is for all the units that uh, were outside the siege. They yeah. were on the Army of Observation or weren't actually on the siege line. So that, that whole street right there. That's up at the Bus Grade Statue in so Pennsylvania Yard. Yeah, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts. Right. Rhode Island area. before that, right. New York's up in that area too. Right. New Hampshire's got something there. Yeah. <laughs> and that's there because uh, at Sherman's, uh, Sherman's guy Corps had suffered so badly in the 19th and 22nd assaults. They were put up there to face up to the northeast to guard against any potential ingress by Johnson, uh, Joseph B. Johnson coming out of the uh, Army Relief of uh, Jackson. One thing that bends also, you've got a lot of the guys that were involved with colored troops, Dennis, Lee, those guys are all right across from them. Right, Ferrero. Exactly. Yep, there's three bus directly across from this monument, and you're seeing <laughs> the officers, white officers that were in charge of Manson's colored troops. <clears throat> Can you go back to the which one? Mock, the one you just left for just a yeah, second, just, just for everyone's it. interest. The same artist for the African American monument here has just been hired to do the Mississippi monument at Shiloh. Oh, nice. Okay. Doctor Sesson. Yes. Yeah, he's a, uh, a physician of the Brookhaven. Yeah. Very talented artist indeed. We actually were fortunate. Uh, he loaned us some of his artwork, both uh, this beauty of man and uh, two two dimensional design elements. And we had him on display at the visitor center for well, about a month, better part of a month, not too long ago. He comes back to touch up the monument every once in a while, so you see him in the park on occasion. <coughs> Iowa, come on, there he is. Uh, Iowa is a Henry Kitson effort with the exception of the equestrian statue, which was added a little bit later, 1912, as you can see. That's a, uh, a combined effort of both Theo and Henry. It's interesting because during this process, they're actually, uh, they're making this piece of art, they're estranged, they're going through the divorce process. So it's not that they were working together in perfect harmony. At that point, it got, the, it got to the point there was so much alienation that they went to work together. I want to do a piece, and I'm going to take another piece, and they put things together later. Dedication. Again, you see the question of statue is not in place yet. Neat thing about this monument, that's a nice shot of it during the 150th, uh, the friezes you see there. You have a Grand Gulf, you have Champion Hill, Big Black, uh, Port Gibson. They're all depicted there. So close. This is before restoration, by the way, which took place last year. So you see some pieces are missing. For example, his uh, musket has been broken off. But uh, just begin the tremendous, tremendous talent of Henry Hudson kids in out there. This could be the battle of uh, <clears throat> thank you, Grand Gulf, the naval personnel, the gunboats. The champion now. There's the Wisconsin. Oh, we got old Abe up top there. Uh, mascot, I think, with the West, excuse me, the eighth Wisconsin. And there's yeah. discussion right now with the state of Wisconsin to uh, restore their monument as well. Oh, I see, that needs it. And again, it's reflective of a lot of the different uh, design elements. You have uh, Bosworth leaves around it, its panels. You have the Adora column again. Then you have the freestanding uh, bronze sculptures, such as this one here, the trooper, the Calvary trooper, the carving. Again, take a lot of attention to detail as far as accoutrements, weapon systems, the right type of saddle, harness. Uh, he's got a carbine and a carbine box on his uh, hip, rather than a traditional 40 round uh, infield or a rifle musket box. The bullet hole is doing it. Does he? Yeah. yeah. See it. <laughs> I don't see it as plain as that. <laughs> like, right oh, yeah, check it out. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Yeah, Never noticed that. That was a good one. about the privations and the bitter winter they suffered here in the uh, bayous in the uh, backwaters of the, the uh, levees during Vicksburg campaign. That's how we got. I think we're just about done, so this is good. Yeah. One of the other reasons, the uh, mortar scows, that's on the Wisconsin. Yeah. This about wraps it up, folks. Uh, again, this is a, it's really important you better acquaint yourself. I mean, I'm no expert on this, obviously, but what I did is I got a hold of Parker's book, and it has everything you could possibly want to know about these monuments in it. It's got biographic information on the artist. 
It's got explanation of design elements, really technical design elements. Every piece of the Illinois Monument, for example, is labeled in here. Tells you exactly what it's called. Um, so there'll be no stump the chump questions from your visitors if you study this closely or anything about it. All right, thank you so much, folks, for coming out, and uh, good luck to coming guides.